That's not the actual painting. That is the shadow of the painting. In other words, there was a piece of paper on top of the painting to protect it. And when we peel that wet piece of paper off, this is, this was on it. Some nice little murals here. No artist is more closely associated with the Mississippi Gulf Coast than the late Walter Anderson. Anderson's place in coast lore is almost mythic. A singular talent, Anderson reflected his passion for the natural world of the Gulf Coast in his art. Bob, as he was known locally, spent most of his last 17 years living and painting in his cottage. I imagine that he looked at this and he said, hmm, there are some framed panels. I better put some paint on them. <laughs> so he put paint on them. The cottage Anderson called home stands on waterfront property known as Shearwater, initially purchased by his mother for use as an artist colony. Ocean Springs has really been an arts enclave, I would say, since the turn of the last century. Even Mrs. Anderson, the mother of Walter Anderson, she herself was an artist. And we had many folks from New Orleans and also Philadelphia and Chicago and New York who would come in summer here on the Gulf Coast. Long considered an eccentric and mysterious figure, Anderson presented his family with a final surprise after his death when they discovered the now famous little room in his cottage. A wall-to-wall, -wall, floor to ceiling mural depicting scenes of life on the Gulf Coast, the little room is Anderson's homage to his beloved home. The little room is actually removed from the building and taken to the Walter Anderson Museum. His family did not even see the little room until after his death. That mural actually is probably the reason this, uh, this house is, is well known in the state. The little room was where Walter spent most of his time when he wasn't on Horn Island. And so what he depicted was what he loved so much about Horn Island and the entire Gulf. He depicted it right here in the little room. In the center of the room, he had put a chest with a great deal of his art. And on top of the chest, he had left a handwritten copy of the 104th Psalm, which is a song of appreciation to God for the Eden that we have been given. For John Anderson, the little room brought his father the recognition he long deserved, and not only from the outside world. I think all of us have a tendency to uh, take our fathers for granted. And then you start asking yourself, well, if all these people think he was something special, maybe I better rethink this. <laughs> maybe, maybe I better uh, find out why they think he was something special. Shearwater was severely damaged in the storm. The majority of the family structures were demolished. Worse, the vault holding Anderson's work was breached, damaging the collection and sending countless paintings floating into the sound. Anderson's cottage suffered. The house was knocked from its foundation, stripped of its porch, and exposed to the elements when the roof was gashed open. How often are you in the cottage these days? How often do you come in? Very little. Uh, none of us like to look at devastation. Um, so we have a tendency to come only when we need to. To, to do some work, but I don't come here too often to look at how bad it is. During the first week after the storm, the fire chief and chief engineer of the town of Arbemarle, North Carolina, came to visit my office and asked, what could we do? Well, I said, I have a spot that's particularly, if you could bring a crew, I have the spot for you. So the group from Arbemarle, North Carolina came with six of their public works directors and their equipment and helped the family here pick up piece by piece of the lumber to salvage as many of the paintings and pottery as possible. More help arrived in the form of the Mississippi Heritage Trust Pilot Stabilization Program and the Mississippi Department of Archives and History's Hurricane Relief Historic Preservation Grant Program.
The department's aim was to identify and preserve historically and culturally significant structures damaged but not destroyed by Katrina. Preserving the home of the coast's most famous artists is one of several hundred ongoing projects. The first thing we do is very pragmatic, is uh, to go through the debris field from the hurricane and sort out the pieces of the house and do an inventory. And from uh, historic photographs, family snapshots, what have you, figure out, OK, what did this look like? Because <laughs> yeah. there are things that Mr. Anderson uh, did to it that, uh, that, that would not be part of its original historical structure uh, that he did to make it into a living studio. Because he was an artist, he was interested in light, so he made modifications to give himself more light. This whole wall was mm -hmm. taken out and made into windows. He also made these two large openings on both sides and put sliding garage doors. He could slide the garage doors back on both sides, and the house just uh, was completely open. Uh, the air just flowed right through it. I think as some would agree, from this threshold is where he captured those moments of time that are so well expressed in his work. And, uh, and its, uh, it's importance is uh, not only uh, as a, a survivor of a historic structure here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, where we lost so many thousands of historic structures, but it's uh, iconographic for uh, the, you know, the culture of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, which is a unique culture. In addition to the hundreds of historic structures completely lost in the storm, thousands more remain severely damaged and susceptible to the elements. Preservationists are working alongside residents to secure the coast's cultural legacy. It's uh, so vital to preserve uh, the, the built environment of this culture uh, because uh, without tangible built evidences of what is the culture of Mississippi Gulf Coast, um, you have no context. So I, I think that it's uh, uh, vital that they survive.